seen it kicking anymore. Let's see. No, there we go. It is still kicking, unfortunately. You can see those little cubs are starting to bite around on the on the sort of rear end there. But they're not unfortunately doing the damage that an adult lion would do. And the other lions are just sitting in the distance, not really paying too much attention. I think that they've still got full bellies. Oh, look at it, it's up again. Now this is the adrenaline pumping through this buffalo. Let's see what happens. You can see all the little cubs. I've gotten excited again. Come on, little buffalo, make a run for it. This is absolutely incredible. I hope you're all snapping and taking screenshots. Because I don't think we'll see something like this too soon. No, it's, it's a very, very special occasion to see all the pride. Look at that little cub. Look at how incredible it was, jumping straight onto the back of the buffalo, which is that exactly what its mother would have taught it to do. Here we go, and the lioness now going in to try and suffocate that buffalo, little buffalo calf. What incredible strength it has. Now the lioness coming in to see what what's going on. One of the males is up. I'm not sure if it's Tinyo or Mfumo just yet. That log is perfectly positioned on his face to be able to see who he is. I did see Tinyo though lurking around earlier this afternoon so perhaps it's him but we'll have to wait until we get a better look. Hopefully this will be the last time that this lioness has to suffocate this buffalo. I'm just trying to look very carefully to see if this buffalo has passed on. No, I think it's still alive. It's unfortunately getting weaker and weaker as the afternoon goes on. And this is what I love. He said, every single day you go out in the bush, and it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this for, you will always see new behavior, or find a new bird, a new insect, something that you've been looking for for ages or you've perhaps just heard about. This is just, just an incredible afternoon. Now, Janice and Mind Warp, you are very, very good this afternoon. You guessed correctly. They guessed that I was Nana, one of the male Birminghams, which of course I am. And that's one of the key identifying features, of course, is that equal sign scar that he has got on his nose. And that's probably the only way that you would have guessed that he was him, or that I was him. Because I look, I don't think I look anything like a lion this afternoon. Oh, you can see that little one seems to have pulled a bit of intestines or something out. I'm not sure what it's got. And that is incredible that that little one has done that all on its own without the help of any of the adults. Really, this is going to be a sighting to remember and one that is going to be talked about for quite some time. I haven't seen that buffalo. No, is it still making a noise? Yeah, I think I can still see its his little nose moving around occasionally. Remember, this is obviously quite gruesome. So like we said, if you're perhaps not too keen on seeing something like this, we understand how sensitive it is. You're more than welcome to make a cup of tea very quickly. 
or grab yourself a, a nice cool drink and add extra ice and just step away for a little bit and we'll always catch you up on the details if there's anything that you did miss and hopefully the adrenaline is just pumping through its veins that it doesn't indeed feel all of that pain it's the only good thing about adrenaline is that you can feel super hu uh, hu uh, human often people who say that they've been in car accidents and sustained broken bones didn't even know that they had any broken bones until afterwards now I was wondering what the lions are watching and it seems as though a little bush buck has just popped out of the fence and out of the lodge can you see it all the way down there you can see those adults were looking at it is it outside the fence yet? No, it's still inside. Well, you're very lucky, Mr. Bushbuck. Isn't he quite a beautiful specimen? This is, of course, one of the fences to the lodges. This is happening right outside. For your teller on, on Duma, isn't that amazing? You really wouldn't have even needed to go off of your porch this afternoon. You could have sat right there on the deck watching these beautiful lions. I don't think the bushbuck is going to want to come out now. I think it's going to rethink its plans and possibly stay behind the fence and eat all the nice green grass and manicured plants around the lodge. If you do come out, you... Oh, no, he's, it is coming out. I'm sorry, I'm just watching this bushbuck because the adults seem to be staring at it in the distance. No, it's gone back in again. <laughs> yes, that is the right thing to do. I don't think you want to come out. Yeah, you can see it heard the lions. We'll say growling and making quite a bit of noise. Now something that I've noticed with these Birmingham boys, and it's quite interesting, is that um, yes they're very well capable Oh, oh, sorry, Jimmy, I'm going to get back to your question now. Did you see that lioness? She actually almost got a, port, uh, a hoof to the face there. And even this little calf would be able to do some damage. That would be quite sore. Now, so basically, Jimmy, you were wondering why that male lion in the distance didn't come down and, and help kill this buffalo. Something that I've noticed with the Birmingham boys is they try, or well, they seem to do as little work as possible. We saw it the last time when, I think it was Mfumo, when I actually watched the lions take down a buffalo, a young buffalo calf as well and he attempted to and the little buffalo charged him and well he ran for the hills and he said right I'm done I'm not having anything to do with that anymore and it seems to be the girls, now that's of course not very common because I can speak about the Charleston males who are incredible hunters and often leave the southern pride and go off and take down their own buffalo and I recently just watched a video of where it was the Charlestons that indeed ran in and made the first move on two buffalo, not just one. Well, I think the the adult sort of stomachs are, are quite full. I'm actually not even sure if they ate the other buffalo. Now, Johnny, you're wondering how old are the oldest in Kahuma cubs? They're almost six months at the, at uh, the end or the beginning of November. They should be about six months, and then it goes five months, and then four months. So two older cubs. And then, of course, three middle-aged cubs, which will be five months in a couple of, or actually in probably a couple of days or so. And then, of course, the three little teddy bears, who we have seen, are not very teddy bear-like at the moment. They're growing up so fast. Look at those two having a little brawl. You're no match for me, little one. You're going to have to grow a bit more. Let's see if it jumps up for round two on the log. It's very, it's amazing how these lionesses are so tolerant of how these little cubs bite their ankles, bite their tails, bite their ears, jump on them and do all sorts of crazy things.
No, there's almost nothing else around us besides that bushbuck, of course, that's roaming around inside the lodge. And I think that with the, the commotion that's gone on here, it's probably going to keep the other animals at bay. I don't think they're going to want to have anything to do with this in case they fall victim to the ever so successful in Kahumas. Like I always say, I'm very impressed with the game viewing up here in the northern sands. It is, it is phenomenal. Now you can see this lioness uh, that we can see, she's got a couple of cuts on her, the one that's looking towards us now. Can you see those gashes down if you go a little bit further down, Darby? There we go. Now I saw them this afternoon and they were fresh and I suspect it's injury sustained when they brought down that other juvenile buffalo. Just a few superficial wounds though, she'll be alright. And that, that's often what happens, is they do come away with a couple of sort of cuts and scrapes. And of course, of my favourite story about battle wounds of lions is of course with the Charleston males. Two beautiful males that come from the Charleston farm, so around Londolosi and they moved south. Where they, two of them took down a giraffe, a fully grown male giraffe. And one of the males got his canine kicked out of his mouth. And it still dangles there today. This is unbelievable. All of them trying to get in and try and help as much as they can. Now, Biggie Boy, you're wondering how long are these lions going to hang around the kill? I I'm unsure. Because the calf that they that they killed earlier was maybe a little bit bigger than this one that we're seeing now, but I'm not seeing any of their bellies looking particularly full. So perhaps a little bit later we'll go around and maybe try and have a look and see what's happening with that other carcass and see if it's still there, if they even touched it. And there's my favorite little girl sitting up on the log, not playing. You're going to fall off. Yes, off you go. Yes, little little line, practice those moves. I mean, I think that these lines are going to have an advantage one day. Like I said, I, I've never seen this before. And I really, I don't think we even grasp as to how valuable this this moment is in these little cubs' life. I think that when they're older, they probably... I'm going to think whether lions do this or not, I'm not sure. I think only lions can really answer that. But whether they look back on memories, if they do have memories, and will remember something like this. I also just can't believe how that little cub leaped onto that buffalo's back when it had attempted to get up. That was just outstanding. I mean, that's where you see natural instinct kicking in at its absolute best. And that natural instinct, well, it never goes away. And I think we as humans sometimes forget that and think that we can domesticate absolutely everything. But we can't. Especially these, all these animals that are supposed to be out in the wild. I feel so embarrassed with my face. Everybody's going to giggle as they go past and they're snapping photos. Hi! Happy Halloween! <laughs> Especially um, some guests who perhaps don't know about what we are and what we do and how silly we are at times. They're probably thinking, oh my goodness, that's a loony bunch on that vehicle. But David, I suppose we are a little bit loony, hey? Yes. We, you can't be normal and do what we do. Nope. And it's great. We've got the looniest bunch of amazing people that we get to work with every every single day. And, that, and Louise said the same thing in my ear. She said she wouldn't have it any other way. And I think that's what makes us such a good team. It's if we all have our wonderful little quirks. Very much like what you see in a pride of different animals. You don't choose your family. You've just got to get on and accept that everybody's a little bit different. Like my favorite lioness, who's the feistiest of the whole bunch, the one doing the ballet. No, she's not, she's not, that's not her. 
my little lion, I think, is down in and amongst the, the sort of lion pile that we're seeing. There we go. She's, she's right in at the back of the log. Now, I love this little lion. She's very special to me. There she is. You go, girl. See what I mean? Even though she's got mange, she's still got the biggest personality and the biggest fight of her. And that's why I think that she's going to beat this. And she's going to continue and become an incredible lioness.